Wow. Wow. Um, first off, I see a lot of unique and similar faces that I saw in New Orleans. Uh, some of you guys saw when I was in New Orleans, I was on the stage uh, on a panel talking about what we'd done at Bo uh, in the two years that we were there. Um, significantly at Bo, before I get into Big Chicken, um, our, our claim to fame was in the two years we were there across team functions, we moved one channel from being a $3 million organic channel to being a $92 million channel. Um, and it was all about digital. And so when I was in New Orleans talking about what we did at Bo, it quickly kind of sparked the conversation that I was having with um, what turned out to be my predecessor in this role. Uh, we were talking about how. How does that even happen? How fast do you have to go to go from doing something like that, which took us two years to do when we were at Bo? And then I was like, well, you guys have the ability to go faster. And I think she was like, seriously? And from that conversation, it sparked her to send a text message to the CEO of Big Chicken and uh, said, hey, I think I found your guy. And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how we broke the mold um, in 90 days. Um, a large piece of this work was done in 30, 60, 90 days. Um, during my conversations with Big Chicken, I said it exactly like that. I said, give me 30, 60, 90, and uh, we'll change how this company does digital for forever. And so we've done a phenomenal job at that. So uh, first, I'd like to kind of say thank you guys for, for being here and staying around. Everybody's eyes still look like we're still rocking and rolling. Nobody's had the food get too heavy. So that's a good thing. Um, and hopefully the food that's on the screen doesn't change you guys. So I always like to start here, right? When I, was, when I did this with Bo, uh, I expected a different set of hands to go up. So raise your hand if you've ever been to a Big Chicken. Right. It's four. It's four folks. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of Big Chicken. I ask that in opposite format for a reason, right? Um, because when I got here, um, the first thing that I had to help us to kind of understand is that we're not in the customer business. We're not in the user business. We're not in the guest business. We are in the human being experience business. We changed every single verbiage in our marketing in 15 days that had customer, guest, or user to human beings, to people. Nothing that we're doing has anything to do with customers or guests or users. Like, that's all fancy words that us as marketers come up with to, like, say, like, we sound like a little bit more kind of advanced than everybody else. But the reality is that's just not the truth. So... Our big break was through digital. Um, everything we did was centered around how do we reinvigorate, recreate, redesign, rethink, reimagine, um, and then just go full speed ahead. Uh, in my first meeting with the team, I established what we call the all hands meeting. And this was for all of our vendors, all of our partners, all of our agencies to come on a meeting, right? And I established in the first five minutes, I said, listen guys, the way you guys will see me is if we have a 5% chance of doing something, go. If it's 4%, like, let's reassess. If it's 3%, let's reassess. If it's 2%, like, we're probably not going to do it. But if it's 5% of a chance that we can do something, let's go. And so my presentations and my conversations are always here first. Here's why. Big Chicken today, um, and as of this morning, that number is not 24 anymore. Now it's 25. But Big Chicken today had a market saturation issue. When I was at BOA, 800-unit system, that's at 900 units now, across the majority of the United States, if you're on the West Coast, they're coming to you soon, right? They were a 800-unit system that was a behemoth. They had co-ops. They could take 2 to 3% of those gross dollars, put them together in a co-op, and spend those advertising and media dollars and spread it across an entire DMA. Just not my reality. I have restaurants in places like Clio, Michigan, Heartland, Michigan, that has less than 30,000 citizens, right? I got restaurants in a place right down the highway, Valencia, California, only restaurant in the entire state of California. This morning, we're in Minden, Nevada. We're getting ready to open up in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Uh, we're, we're in Boston proper, in Peabody, uh, Massachusetts. 
So the, the marketing rules here just, they don't apply the same. So we could not approach it the same. And I kind of started to figure that out before I even got to the job. Two weeks before I started the job, I put in my traditional two weeks notice. So anybody here that's from HR that might know somebody in HR, I did put in a two weeks notice, <laughs> all right? But inside of that two weeks when I was not working, um, I spent my time sitting in meetings with my camera off, just listening to how their meetings went prior to. And I just didn't hear enough of think people thinking, guys, where's the localized approach? What are we going to do for, for the family who, like, their big chicken is right outside of their neighborhood? They pass by it when they're on the way to and from work or school. What are we doing to tell them to, to try to convince them to come check us out? Are we taking this, like, we're big enough to do it approach? Did we believe that Shaquille O'Neal is a big enough brand himself to make people want to come to our restaurants? Like, six months ago, I didn't know who Big Chicken was. It's one of my first statements. How do we change that? There are people inside of our markets who did not know who we were months ago. And the expectation was just Shaquille O'Neal will introduce us to everybody, right? Like most dominant center ever, he'll get us in the door, <laughs> <laughs> right? So goals, I, I kind of start with goals. For me, it's about here, right? These are the things that are the table stakes. These are the things that for me, I hold myself accountable to. My team knows I brought my uh, couple of team members with me over from Bo. Uh, my number two and number three from Bo came over with me over to Big Chicken. And these two ladies know they can hold me accountable. If it's a no, it's a no from them, right? I'm not the guy that's going to sit around in the room and act like I know everything. So for me, it was how do we set some tangible goals that are realistic and, and attainable? So for us, it was, all right, I need to tear down some things, right? This house needs to be torn down a little bit, all right? Beautiful home from the curb, right? Great curb appeal, but the freaking carpet's rotting. Hardwoods got started buckling. Walls need a new coat of paint. Um, some of them have holes in them. And that was, I attribute all of that to our lack of communication with our human beings. Because we were still treating them like guests. We were still treating them like users. We were, at, we were quantifying how many people were inside of our funnel by saying, how many downloads do we have? Like, seriously? If I walked up to you and I said, hey, customer, how are you? What do you want, customer? What do you want, user? Hey, uh, you seem like a pretty cool guest. What do you want? I'm like, well, my name's Brad. <laughs> That's not my name, right? So the reality is we needed to tear some things down. So we started where we saw the most visibility. Where the, what's the first point of visibility for people who may be in the neighborhood, but they just don't have time to stop by the restaurant? And it's the app. It's the website. Tore the app completely down. For three days, the app was not available. Nobody could use the app for three days. And our operators were like panicking, like, yo, like what's going on? I'm like, bro, y'all didn't even care about the app a week ago. Like, <laughs> so the app was torn down. I set a lofty goal of getting to 25% of digital sales. And just so you guys can know, you're gonna see a chart here that shows us here next, that shows where we got to in the time period since I've been here. What it doesn't show is where we were literally a month prior. Month prior, we were low double-digit percentage of digital sales. And this is, this is recorded. We were low double-digit percentage of digital sales. We had an app. We had a website. That was about it. The third thing we wanted to do was we needed to create a new brand look. I wanted to take some chances, and our, our CEO was like, yeah, you can do that, but... That's a little too far. And I'm like, well, if I can make it make sense to you, will you be willing to try? He was like, if you can make this make sense to me, I'll try it. And so some of these things, I just had to make sense to them. Had to reconsider how we utilize Shaquille in our media, how we reused Shaquille in some of our old assets, and how we repurposed those assets to go into places where we just hadn't been before. Um, we wanted to increase visits by our people that were already in our funnel, that we hadn't communicated with, 
we wanted to bring them back at least two to three times before the year was over. So that meant we needed to create a brand new menu. We needed to introduce some things that we just didn't have. We were known for our signature sandwiches, our shakes, but what about other things? We were making LTOs simply around our sandwiches. It's chicken sandwich, add a little bit of coleslaw, add some different things, drizzle some sauce on it. Maybe people will come in and come check us out then. No, no bueno, right? We launched our loyalty program called Tears, and I want to talk about that here in a second, about where we decided to go with our loyalty program and really kind of redesigning and reconfiguring what loyalty looks like. And then we increased our touch points, very simply. Email, push notification, social media, digital, paid advertising, all became layered on. I talked about this in New Orleans, about my overall dream is the concept that if you're sitting now watching a basketball game, and I have to say basketball because we're here with Big Chicken and Shaquille. When I was at Bowl, it could be football. But if you're sitting down watching a basketball game, in a perfect world, I'd like to be sending you an email, push notification, a social media post, and you should be getting something in your app from me simultaneously all at the same time. Because I don't know where you are right now. I don't know if you're in the car. I don't know if you're driving. I don't know if you're at your kid's basketball game. I don't know if your, your partner is somewhere else and they're actually making the food decision for tonight. Like, I need to layer this on. I need to hit you really, really hard, really, really fast at multiple different touch points. So we needed to increase the touch points to communicate. Here's what it did. When I was transitioning here in June, we were low double digit percentage of digital sales. And when I say low double digit, I'll tell you the actual number. We were at 11% of digital sales. And for context, for everything we did at Bo, it was, it resulted in about 11% of digital sales. But 11% of digital sales at a $3 billion company is pretty tangible. You go from 2% to 11%, that's a pretty steep jump. We are currently at 23% of digital sales. We will shatter the 25% of digital sales number. As of Monday, this Monday, we are closer to 25% of digital sales than we've ever been. We're at 24.4% of digital sales on, as of Monday. We'll shatter this. And it is because of all of the key components of that strategy. I just laid it out. Make a more friendly, human being friendly app and website. If you don't have our app downloaded, I please download the app. You do not have to be in a market where we are. Eventually, you'll be traveling somewhere where we are. And you're going to want to use the app. And here's why. When we started to rethink about what loyalty really means, our CEO came to me and he said, is it about the amount of money that a person spends that makes them loyal? We're not a 45, 50 year old company that has that luxury. We haven't been selling chicken for a decade yet. We're a six year old. We're a first grader. So how do we, as a first grader, based company, convince people to be loyal to us. What are our competitive advantages? And we started writing stuff on the board. I started writing things on the paper. It was like, nope, that's not a competitive advantage. It's like, what about this? One? Nah, that's not a competitive advantage either. I said, well, the only things that's left on this board is Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> Experiences, and then the quality of our food. So how do you make a loyalty app that centers around those three things. And I said, well, instead of us counting the dollars that people spend with us, how about we start to quantify the experiences they have with us? We, we, we're gonna know if they spent money. But what if every single time a person comes in and they have an experience with us, they become a starter? Reach maybe five or 10 experiences with us, you're a starter. No pun intended to Shaquille, he's a starter his whole career, All right? And that may open the door for you to be able to get, I don't know, if Shaquille's in your market, maybe we give you some tickets for you to go check out a DJ Diesel concert. Just from experiencing something with us. Let us know. Give us a review. Every once in a while, once out of every 10 visits, maybe give us a review. Tell us how we did. If we did terribly, it doesn't disqualify you. If you say that the chicken dunks were terrible, 
and the food was cold, we're not going to be like, all right, forget you. You're not coming to no events, right? But let's take it a step further. Maybe you come and experience us maybe three to four more times. We talked about quantifying two to three more visits. Let's say, for instance, you do that. You have an experience with us two or three more times in a year. Well, maybe when Shaquille is in town and it's a basketball game in your market, maybe we get you some tickets for you to go see that basketball game. Sounds pretty cool just by you experiencing. I haven't said a single thing about us going to spend money or having to spend a certain amount of money. I'm talking about how many experiences you have with us. And if you're really, really loving our experience, if we increase two to three more times, how about the possibility that we buy you and another person a plane ticket and we fly you out to Las Vegas during DJ Diesel's uh, residency in Vegas and you get a chance to spend a half a day with Shaquille, including going to the event? Chicken doesn't sound too bad to go and experience now, does it? <laughs> So for me, it was about doing these things, revamping that loyalty program, personalizing the marketing, like just sending you an email that says, hey, Nick, thanks for coming to see us. How was your experience last time you came to Big Chicken? And because you did that, we're going to give you five points in what we call experience points, or what we call box buck. Tech stack upgrade. Listen, man, I, and I've been honest about this. I was honest about this in New Orleans. Uh, when it comes to our vendors and our partners and our advertisers, I treat you guys like humans as well. And honestly, those experiences kind of ebb and flow year to year. Some of our human beings will get to go into the next year with us based on the goals that we set. Some necessarily won't. And what we hope is that we keep a great relationship with our tech partners, our agencies, our vendors, our advertisers, so that when that opportunity comes again and we may change and reinvigorate those goals, that you're ready and available for us, ready to play and get in the game. And then the last thing was localized promotions and in-store uh, integration. I think it makes no sense that if you live in LA for me to send you something that's relevant in Boston. Makes no sense. What you need to do inside of Texas is gonna be different than what I need to do in Michigan. I mean, the conditions are just different. In Arizona, is just different. So we needed to personalize it. And so the last thing I want to just kind of show you guys um, is just kind of how this thing kind of turned out to look. The new app design, more personalized, more swag to it. Uh, we wanted to be a little bit innovative, a little bit different, um, but also wanted to have some, le some lethal simplicity here. Uh, website design, the same. Bottom left corner, you'll see what the old website design look. Looks like a dry piece of chicken there on the screen. Um, <laughs> just, just doesn't work, right? Like, who wants to eat that? But... <laughs> On the top of the screen here, you see the different sandwiches. You see our signature sandwiches there. Whatever our promotional item is, it goes to the top of the website. I'm talking like simple stuff that, for us, man, most of you guys represent brands that have been around a decade or longer that we just had to get right as a young brand, as a six-year-old. Marketing updates, this was the fun one. So when I got here in July, my first gift from our board and from our senior level management was a full day of shooting with this guy. And I hadn't even set my promotion calendar yet for the rest of the year. Hadn't figured out what 2025 was looking like. He called me before we got to the Pepsi studio. And this is literally where I'm going to end because I think this is the thunder that we, we certainly are trying to bottle up. But we got here um, and he was like, nephew, just move out the way. I got it. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, hey, man, I got a lot of scripts for you to go through. What you mean you got it? He's like, trust me, I got you. I know what you need that you don't think you know what you need yet. So I said, bet, cool. <laughs> Step back. And he created magic, man. And it made it make sense to me weeks later when I was talking to our CEO and he was like, what's our competitive advantage? And it's the big fella. So take a look at this. That's Shaquille, y'all. That's Shaquille. Absolutely. 
so I'll, I'll kind of breeze through these things, man. I, I, I can have these conversations here. We talked about that layered media strategy on the local level, um, introducing NIL, um, introducing some athletes that we have across the board. Uh, Texas Tech will be at Rutgers. We have some NIL athletes over at Rutgers as well, um, primarily in basketball because we introduced the chicken dunks. No pun intended, but absolutely pun intended. Um, and then also being able to maximize on some of the partnerships we can be able to utilize, right, to win the point of desire, decide. Um, for us, it's all about the point of decide, helping our human beings to make a more seamless, reasonable, realistic decision when it's time for them to make a choice to spend some of their hardworking dollars with us. And so um, we wanted to complement it in the app, at the counter, and on third party. Uh, and I'm honest about the fact that Look, DoorDash and Uber Eats and Grubhub, now Grubhub Wonder, I don't know what they're going to come up with a name, uh, has been a, a almost a godsend for us to be able to really, really help to drive those dollars from a layered media strategy perspective. If we take that out, they're meant to be a complement, not a replacement. If we take them out of the model, the model is just not as effect effective. And I would say that to all of our brand marketers. I know we absolutely hate working with these DSPs. We wish we could drive this straight to first party. I know it, y'all. But trust me, if we take them out of the model, we absolutely take away the efficiency that we have. And so for us, third party has been a great, great addition to that model. And then it's kind of looked like this for us. This is how it's looked for us. Uh, the three at the top are intentionally at the top. And the two at the bottom are intentionally at the bottom. Uh, we use a champion challenger process here. If you can beat the guys that's at the top, nobody's going to beat number one, so they might as well not even try. But if you can beat the other champion, the other champions that exist in the categories or in the channel, be our guest. It does nothing but allow us to be more competitive, drive down the rates for our franchisees so that they're a little bit more, they're keeping a little bit more in their top line. Hopefully it falls to their bottom line. And then it challenges these platforms believe it or not, to not lay on their laurels. They know how many users they have. DoorDash, I love you. But I know you know how many users you have, right? Uber Eats, love you, same thing. Grubhub, Wonder, Wonder Grub, whatever the name's gonna be, same thing. And Easy Cater, um, for us, catering, like we're just getting started in catering. Um, we've got some things that we wanna do to reinvigorate catering, but I wanted to drive digital sales outside of catering first. So unfortunately, Easy Cater is kind of at that bottom spot right now. But there's some opportunity for us in catering. And any partners that are in here that can help us to drive catering, I'll be sitting right there in the back. <laughs> Let's talk, all right? Um, and then the point of delight, last thing, um, the opportunity we had with the app was to uh, customize Big Chicken's loyalty program to improve overall customer experience or human being experience. Uh, literally, I talked about what we, what we looked to do, what we wanted to do, how we hypothesized that. Um, and I challenged our team to make, to get as close as possible to the hypothesis from a results orientation standpoint, right? And what that looks like is we have check-ins every single week of seeing where we are from a measured success, success standpoint. We reinvigorate and change our KPIs bi-weekly based off what we see from performance. So what I tell our team on mon this Monday versus what I'll tell my team in two weeks to keep them fresh and keep them active in these conversations with these channels is to change the KPIs, change how we're measuring this. What matters to us today in impressions is not gonna matter to us in two weeks in impressions because we've had this media in the cycle for two weeks now. Why are we still judging off impressions? These are now conflated impressions. These are people who've already seen this media and already seen these assets. So let's change the KPIs. What matters now, two weeks later? And so we hypothesize based off of that and uh, you know what, what thanks, our partners over at Thanks did for us through this platform and said, hey, whatever it is you guys want to do, I, they, we're, they were with us in it. And I was like, great, but I can't give you any more money. And so we figured out how to be able to get this done um, as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible without having to spend a ton of additional dollars. And here's what it did for us from an activation standpoint. Um, I was on a call uh, last week and somebody asked me were these like, was this like a fake chart? And I was like, I didn't even make this chart. Thanks made the chart. So can't be fake numbers, but this is real. This is how we've driven digital revenue through web and app against each other. 
in the time since we've been here. That steep climb uh, where you see that drop was where we were introducing new menu items, introducing wings and dunks, and hadn't turned on advertising yet. And I, I believe in these windows, right? I need a couple weeks without advertising on, soft launch, everybody knows soft launch, for me to be able to see, can this sustain itself without dollars being put behind it? And so we saw a slight dip, but then we saw a climb, and then we've continued to climb. So, um, man, we're just getting started. We're just getting started at Big Chicken. Uh, please keep your eyes peeled open for what we're going to do next year. We think this is great, but we've got some even loftier goals that uh, require us. You know, I'm, I'm all about us. Set a high goal. Let's go get it. Um, my team knows that. And so we're, we're really, really excited about what 2025 is going to look like for us as we're on our quest to get to 100 restaurants and then get to 200 restaurants and beyond. So um, thank you guys for the time, man. I'm, I'm wide open for questions. I appreciate you guys, and thanks. All right. What questions do we have? Josh, what's up, man? What's up, great, dude? Congrats sorry for everybody. sorry for name dropping. Yeah, you, it's all good, man. That was great. Hey, everybody, I'm Nick from from Ad Theory. And congrats on all the change, man. Just like what a what a huge impact that you had on this brand. Um, in terms of some of your goals, 24, 25, moving to 25. Talk to me a little bit about like how you're thinking about paid media, your marketing utilization of such a great asset for Shaq, um, and kind of some of your goals uh, of of implementing or you know driving some growth through paid media. In 25. Great question. So our, our strategy is um, specifically through pay media, and I'm, I look at this from a channel by channel basis. So we have a channel strategy for every single one, whether it's Meta, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Google with our extended channels, um, whether it's off premise. Um, and then we just introduced our kiosk this year, um, which we consider a channel, an advertising channel. Um, and then clearly you have your traditional channels that we 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 do not have the dollars to get into those channels yet. But to your question, the way I see this is very similar, and you saw it in that last chart, where I need a couple weeks to see how this works organically. And, and it's, it's almost a risk, right? Like, to go 100% organic for a short period of time is risky, uh, but it gives you a chance to see what really is going to stick, what really, really works. And so if it works, if it stands out of the entire group of assets, right, whether it's an audio asset, it's a video asset, it could be a static image, could be something that we're putting up on a billboard. If it really, really works, I've got to be able to track it, and it's got to convert. Every single asset that we have has to be trackable and has to convert. And we have measurements that we would like to see that helps me to believe that this, is st this may be performed better than another uh, asset. Um, and then once we see that it's reached at least 70% of what we believe to be qualitative data, right? Qualitative KPI reach, right? Then we apply dollars behind it to add some extra fire and amplify it. Absolutely. So that's really our strategy. As it pertains to 25, um, our calendar was built. We started building. Angel Ross was our, our uh, senior brand manager. She and I began building our calendar for 25 in, at the end of August. We had national convention in August. At the end of August, once we got from national convention, heard from franchisees about the things that they liked, the things that they didn't like, some of the conversations we needed to be having with our human beings in our funnel, we started building our calendar for 25. Our calendar for 25 is going to be very mo much more aggressive as it pertains to paid media. And so we've got some opportunities in paid media. Now, the only thing is that we can't use Shaquille in all of them. And that's, that's the tough part. That's the roughest part about understanding the lay of the land. Um, there's some places where we can use Shaquille. Uh, social media is a place where we can use Shaquille, but as soon as we put dollars behind it, we've got some some approvals we've got to go through to be able to make it work. It doesn't make it hard. It just makes it a little bit more challenging, which doesn't necessarily mean it's hard. But for us, we just find our way through it. Uh, but next year, we are absolutely going to be super aggressive from a paid media strategy standpoint. So thank you for the question. Shannon Murphy, Smoothie King. Uh, I saw that you had easy cater, or you had catering linking out from the app. Do you have plans to integrate loyalty into your catering? Yes. So, uh, Shannon, here's what ha here's what came out of the meeting last Thursday. As you guys can see, I'm overbooked. Uh, last Thursday, we had a conversation about that specifically with Thanks, and um, my project manager, in the middle of us all being excited, high fiving over over the 
the uh, digital airwaves. We're like, yeah, we got this figured out. Our project manager says, hold on, wait, 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 guys. What happens if, if we have the same type of process for catering that we do with individualized um, loyalty? What happens if a person makes one big purchase and now they have access to all of the rewards for like years? I was like, I never thought about that. Like, like General Motors is like right in the backyard of our Michigan restaurants. They make one order of like $100,000 or more. They un- I'm going to have to start coming up with rewards, honestly. Like, I don't, know. I don't know. Maybe we get you season tickets to the Pistons or something. I don't know. So, so for us, we've got to figure that out. We've got to do that, do that right, which is the reason why Easy Cater is down at the bottom, not because of what they've done. Um, it's the reason why if you go on our app, catering is at the bottom. We've literally organized our app at point of, in, of importance. Um, the things that we find to be the most important, uh, we're not doing, you, and you know this, Shannon, we're not doing light boxes on the front of the app to try to push people to go places. Like, that's, that's irritating. It's annoying. I know as a human being, that's irritating to me. If I'm looking for something specifically and then all of a sudden a freaking box pops up on my phone, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go somewhere else, right? But catering for us needs to be localized. We've got to figure that out on a local level first. And as soon as we figure that out on a local level, then we'll be ready to roll this out digitally. And we would have already kind of figured out some of the do's and don'ts from what we've tested in the local, on the local level that can be able to be kind of spread out and scaled on a national digital level. So um, to your point, it's, there's a reason it's, it's intentional that we have those in those spots, but we still got a long way to go with catering. But catering, as everybody here, everybody's on the brand side, it's the gift that keeps on giving, man. It literally is. If we figure that out and unlock that, we'll drive AUV up another 30%. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you uh, taking us through.